Hi, Dr. Hagmeyer here. One of the questions that I'm often asked by people who are suffering with thyroid disease is why does my medication or my dosage continue to change? You know, a lady I spoke with over the phone uh, a couple days ago said, Dr. Hagmeyer, every time I go in to see my doctor, he is either increasing or decreasing my thyroid medication. My thyroid levels are really all over the place and no matter what he does, in a few short weeks, I'm back to feeling terrible again. Why is my thyroid hormone dosage changing? Why do I feel so lousy despite taking these medications? And is there anything that I can do to stabilize it and get my life back in order? And so the first thing, the first point that I really want to make clear is that taking only thyroid medication is really only 10% of your problem. You know, you won't and you can't get better if the only thing you do to try to correct your thyroid is, uh, your, your thyroid function is, is only take thyroid replacement, okay? Thyroid replacement doesn't even scratch the surface of what really can, but what also should be done from a natural, holistic perspective to stop this attack on your tissues and to properly manage your condition. The other 90% of restoring low thyroid function is really going to depend on many other aspects of your health that need to be investigated with special testing. Now, I've talked about these factors on my website. I've talked about them in other videos, so I'm not really going to be covering these today. But here's what I want you to realize. I want you to realize that these are not things that you can figure out on your own. These are things that instead will require you to work with a knowledgeable doctor familiar with functional medicine and brain-based therapy. Both of these are, are described in a whole lot more detail on my website. You can go back and view those. But when it comes to your TSH levels and your medication dosage and why T4 levels and your T3 levels are, are really all over the place, you're going to want to know that according to the Endocrine Society, 80 to 90 percent of all cases of hypothyroidism in the United States have an autoimmune mechanism. And this is a very, very important distinction. What that means is that eight out of every 10 people that are watching this video have this autoimmune condition. Now, with an autoimmune condition, what you have to understand here, what you have to realize is that your own immune system is destroying your thyroid gland. And because this is a genetic disorder, it was something that was passed on to you by either one of your parents, okay? Now, when you lose thyroid hormones due to Hashimoto's, which is this attack on the thyroid gland, what you're often going to see initially will be an increase in your T3 and in your T4 levels. Now, this rise in T3 and T4 levels initially may look like you have hyperthyroidism. And in fact, you may have symptoms at this point like anxiety, heart palpitations, insomnia, increased brain fog, okay, or even an increase in hair loss. Maybe you've already, you were losing some hair, but now you're losing a lot more hair, okay? It's important that you recognize these symptoms, okay? Eventually, when your T4 levels actually get too high, what's going to happen is, is your brain is going to see that these levels have, have gotten too high, and your brain is going to stop stimulating the thyroid gland, and in turn, it's going to do that by decreasing your TSH levels. So one of two things will happen at this point in time. When your brain tells your thyroid to stop making TSH, when, it, when your brain tells your thyroid to stop making thyroid stimulating hormone, the first scenario that's gonna happen is initially, you might feel okay, okay? You might feel good for a few days or maybe even a few weeks or, or even possibly a few months as your, thyroid horm, as your thyroid hormone levels come back into range. That's scenario number one. Scenario number two, however, on the other hand, is now you might begin to experience low thyroid symptoms. And so you might have things like fatigue, and you might have things like weight gain, or you might have irritability, brain fog, migraines, irritable bowel syndrome, or any of the other 20 or 30 symptoms that are associated with low thyroid function or hypothyroidism. So you have low thyroid function, you go back to your doctor, you're complaining of all these symptoms, the doctor runs some blood work, and now you're told that you're low thyroid, that you're low thyroid or that you're hypothyroid. And so what typically happens is now your doctor will do one of two things. They're now going to either prescribe some sort of synthetic T4 hormone replacement, or he's going to increase the amount of Synthroid or Levothyroxine that you're taking. And over the course of a couple of weeks, your immune system begins to attack your thyroid gland, uh, thyroid gland again. And now the medications that you're taking, plus the leakage of thyroid hormones from, from your thyroid gland, into the bloodstream are now going to raise your T4 levels all over again. And again, now you're going to be going from that hypothyroid state into that hyperthyroid state all over again. 
and now because you're being either over medicated or under medicated at this point in time. And so now again, you start to experience all of the hyperthyroid symptoms, such as the heart palpitations, maybe night sweats, insomnia, brain fog, anxiety, hair loss. And so this roller coaster ride of going from hyperthyroid to hypothyroid should serve, at really more than anything else, as a warning sign that you most likely have undetected Hashimoto's. For many people, this process will go on for years until finally there's been some sort of either permanent damage to the thyroid gland or you, you wind up being in that hyperthyroid state and your doctor now recommends that they remove your thyroid. Now, part of the reason why I wanted to shoot this video is that I see this happening to so many people and I wanted to get this information out so this doesn't happen to you. So you can be aware of these, of these warning signs, if you will. Now, here's a couple of points that you're going to want to take away from today's video. Okay? Number one is that the problem here is not your thyroid per se. It's your immune system's attack on the thyroid gland. Now, if we know that 80 to 90% of people with hypothyroidism have Hashimoto's autoimmune thyroid disease, then it only makes sense that the area that you're going to need to work on will be the immune system. Here is where you're going to need some special testing to identify these triggers to the immune system so that you can take the stress off of the thyroid gland and just dampen down this attack by the immune system. And this is why it's so important that you're really going to want to work with a doctor who's experienced at working with Hashimoto's and the testing that you're going to need in order to get better. So if all you do is take thyroid hormones and all you're doing in that, in that sense is really just replacing the hormones that are lost you're going to be still ignoring the source or the cause of your, of your immune system attack and all of the things that are just instigating, if you will, the attack of your immune system on your thyroid gland. And as time goes on, of course, the longer you fail to address the immune system and the instigators of this immune system, the more and more your thyroid gland is going to become destroyed and the greater the likelihood that there will be permanent destruction and a greater loss of function to your thyroid gland. And of course, with uh, with just ignoring the, this attack on the immune system, what's going to happen is you're going to open yourself up to additional autoimmune conditions. Okay, and this is the reason that Hashimoto's patients are either being over-medicated or under-medicated at any given time. Sadly, this results in many patients having their thyroid removed, like I said earlier. And so, if you suffer with hypothyroidism, and if you have never had your antibody levels checked, your TPO and your thyroglobulin antibodies please go get them checked. And again, you need to have both of them checked. So, in bringing this video to a close, if your dosage is continuously either increasing or decreasing or your TSH levels are increasing and decreasing um, with each doctor's visit, ask yourself whether or not everything is really being done to manage your condition and really give you the quality of life that you deserve. And if you answered no, then I really encourage you to contact our office today at the number that you see below or go to my website. I'm Dr. Hagmeyer, and if you enjoyed this video, please do me a favor. Please share this with someone. Take care.